Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinran Yoko. And tonight, I want to dive deep into paleoclimatology and how it relates to the modern catastrophe cycle. And before we get started, this graph you're looking at is showing you 20 Danskar Oeschger cycles and six Heinrich events. And while those terms may escape you, after this video, you'll be well versed. Now, a paper coming out April 9th of this year from the University of Copenhagen Abrupt Ice Age Climate Change Behaved Like Cascading Dominoes is an expose into why the mainstream capitulation with climate change is nonsense. Why the fear-mongering over a one or two degree C change over decades is not catastrophic. And what the actual paleoclimatological record shows us historically. And what any journalist in the field could simply research and figure out on their own, which they haven't, which proves a point that current uh, dogma on climate change is just that, dogma. It's coming from a higher source that is repeated and regurgitated worldwide on all media platforms. Now, in just a few minutes, you will think otherwise. Now, this paper itself and let's just read the summary. Throughout the last ice age, the climate changed repeatedly and rapidly during so-called Danskad Eschke events, where Greenland temperatures rose between five and 16 degrees Celsius within decades. Let me repeat that. Greenland temperatures rose between five and 16 degrees in decades which pales in comparison to any of the fear-mongering dialogues coming out from the mainstream. And guess what? This happened dozens of times recently. And we're all still here, and the biome is, well, perfectly intact. Now, this occurs when certain parts of the climate system changed, obviously, and other parts of the climate system followed, like a series of dominoes toppling in secession. Today, sea ice extent is being rapidly reduced. And it's uncertain whether this part of the climate system can trigger sudden future climate change. Well, if you watch Suspicious Observers, you know, he talks about how fresh water input, because of the Beaufort Gyre, could potentially cause a rapid ice age just like the movie Day After Tomorrow. And he is correct in that assumption. And it's based on paleo climate data. And here we're going to talk about Heinrich and Danskad Oeschke events. Two separate events. And let's just take a quick look at them. The Danskad Oeschke events here over the last 60,000 years are numbered. And the Heinrich events over the same time period are numbered. And a Heinrich event typically corresponds to a cooling period on Earth. All the H's are at cool spots or low periods, but not all the low periods, just some of the major low periods, like H6 here, and H5 here, and H4 here at that cooling area. Now, at the same time, we have the danskard Oeschger cycles up here happening more rapidly around every 1,400 years, give or take. But let's learn about them. Heinrich and Danskard Oeschger events. And it's going to be pretty crucial because it's all related to the cosmic clock cycle, which you're looking at here, which is some of the most ancient astrological knowledge in human history. And this information has been lost and has been warned about by other advanced civilizations and is now being kept secret from you. But we're going to reveal to you what the cosmic clock says about these events. And now if you're looking at these green dots that fall on this flexure point, we are down here on this flexure point currently. Most of the Heinrich events happen now. 
Now the upper portion of the flexure point is during the onset of the Younger Dryas 12,900 years ago. But now, 12,900 years later, we're on the next flexure point, which is the same as the onset of the late Wisconsinian Ice Age and Heinrich events 52,000 years ago, as well as the Greenland Blitz. I know that's all French to you, but they're all here in these graphs. Let's start with the Dansgaard Ersker events. Those are the more frequently occurring cycles in recent history. Now, these events called Dansgaard Ersker events are abbreviated DO events, and they're named after the paleoclimatologist Willy Dansgaard and Hans Ersker, and they're rapid climate fluctuations that occurred 25 times during the last glacial period. And some scientists say that these events occur quasi-periodically with the reoccurrence time being a multiple of 1,470 years. But this is currently debated. But the paper I showed you basically corroborates it. So we'll just leave it at the 1,470-year base cycle. The best evidence for these uh, events remain in the Greenland ice cores which go back to the end of the last interglacial and involve proxy data. Well, what that means is that they're actually just taking hydrogen 2 and O18 data from the ice to get these graphs. And what you can infer from proxy data is temperature and other things. And here we see the isotope data for Antarctic and Greenland ice cores here. Here's the Antarctic cores up top. Here are the Greenland cores below, and you can see a very high resolution Dansgaard Ersker jumping of temperature of up to 5 to 15 degrees every 1400 years. In the Antarctic, it's much more subtle, and it's still happening, but not as <laughs> pronounced as in the Northern Hemisphere. And this should give you two ideas, that maybe the southern hemisphere, when climate changes, reacts differently than the northern hemisphere. And that could very well be the case. Now here's a particular section of the GRIP and NGRIP ice core with O18 data that is not towards present, but just spans from 30,000 to 50,000 years ago. And you can see that rapid climate change. Now we're going from old to new, right to left. And you can see that Temperature rises 15 degrees here in decades and slowly drops. And then again, boom, straight up and drops. And boom, straight up. None of these vertical rises in temperature are correlative to our current global warming scare. None of them. And in fact, if the temperature rose 15 degrees in a decade, I can assure you I would be scared as well. But the geologic proxy data shows that paleoclimatological proxy data shows rapid rise and drop in temperatures again and again and again. And, it, and it's not the human's fault. It's certainly the planet and the solar system and maybe even the galaxy's fault. Now the Heinrich events are different from Dansgaard Ersker events. A Heinrich event is a natural phenomenon in which large groups of icebergs break off from glaciers and traverse the North Atlantic. First described by a marine geologist, Harmut Heinrich, in 1988, they occurred during five of the last seven glacial periods over the past 640,000 years. And Heinrich events are particularly well documented for the last glacial period, but notably absent from the penultimate glaciation. The icebergs contain rock masses eroded by glaciers, and as they melted, this material was dropped to the seafloor as rafted debris which is why many of them are confirmed. The Heinrich events are shown here in gray on this data set. And according to many, do not occur in a regular periodicity. But by the end of this video, you will think otherwise. Now, what causes the Heinrich and Danschgard Ersker events? That's the meat of this podcast. The causes of these glacial events is still under debate, as we've already said. During the last glacial time, large ice sheets rim the North Atlantic. And at certain times, yes, these ice sheets released large amounts of fresh water into the North Atlantic. We're currently waiting for the Beaufort Gyre to release from the Arctic Ocean, 
but that's just one source. Here you can see the entire Laurentide sheet melting because of maybe a plasma discharge or an impactor event, but that would be flowing out into the North Atlantic. When the Laurentide ice sheet disgorge excessively large amounts of fresh water into the Labrador Sea in the form of icebergs, scientists have hypothesized, yeah, and it is a hypothesis, that these freshwater dumps reduced ocean salinity enough to slow deep water formations and flows, and eventually the thermohaline circulation. Since the thermohaline circulation plays an important role in transporting heat northward, a slowdown would cause the North Atlantic to cool rapidly. Later, as the addition of freshwater decreased, ocean salinity and deep water formation would increase and the climate conditions would recover. So it's a cycle of melt, climate change, freeze and remelt and so forth. Evidence for the changes in deep water formation supports the freshwater forcing hypothesis, which is why they, we have the Heinrich event theory. Since the thermohaline circulation, oh, I'm sorry, we already said that. Measurements from the deep sea sediments in North Atlantic indicate reduction of deep water formation during the Heinrich events. Evidence for freshwater forcing and reduced deep water formation during Danskart Erschger events, however, is more suspect. And these happen more rapidly. And I think the Danskart Erschger, the 1470 year cycle, is probably more solar related. And I showed you how widespread the climate changes were. They are global, in fact. But let's get back to the real mechanism. And, and no one really knows what's happening here. This cosmic clock and my geologic studies in the field for decades have all shown the same thing, that for hundreds of million years, hundreds of millions of years on Earth, the same clock cycle has been at work. It doesn't matter if you're back in the Paleozoic, which is 400 million years ago, or the Precambrian, or, or even the Mesozoic, when the dinosaurs were around just 100 million years ago, or even recently. This clock cycle plays out in sedimentary rocks, in quarries worldwide, no matter when you were alive or when you look. And that leads me to believe that it's an external forcing coming from far away, something much bigger than our solar system, much bigger than our star. Whatever is powering our star is powering this cycle. And you can see it right here. We are on the major flexure point when the majority of cosmic catastrophes over the last half a million years have occurred. 90% occur on this flexure point. We have five major events happening on the flexure point 12,900 years ago. And now we have three events happening on the flexure point today. The onset of the last ice age, Heinrich event 52,000 years ago, and the Greenland ice splits. All ice age events. And these are all melting and warming events. So, it's not anyone's guess where we're headed. The data shows us we're headed to the next glacial period. Period. Now, Let's blow it up and go back almost a million years. And we'll look at all of the proxy data from Vostok and Epica. And a couple things get revealed immediately. This is old and new to the left. That the, take a look at this. The temperature rose rapidly 350,000 years ago. And a few thousand years later, the CO2 followed. Are you picking up what I just put down? 240,000 years ago, the temperature rose rapidly and a few thousand years later, CO2 followed. It's not you, it's not CO2, it's something else. And the big cycle, the catastrophe cycle that ends all advanced civilizations on our planet happens every 100,000 years. And the last one happened 12,900 years ago. So we will survive. But the future is very cold. 
Take a look at what happens after 8,000 years of warm. It goes straight down, baby. And we'll know when it happens. It happens gradually and then rapidly. And all of the shift happens in decades based on paleoclimatological data. So we're waiting for the next Heinrich event in our lifetimes. It's that amazing. I hope you stick with us. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Well, the data is firm. The climate is not controlled by humans. And if we did affect it a degree or a half a degree in the last hundred years, it's unimportant. The main driver of climate is external to our planet. It's rhythmic, it's cyclic, it follows a clock cycle. It always has. And we're on the flexure point for the next disaster. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. We love each and every one of you. Share this with like-minded people. Learn to grow food, stockpile resources, and start thinking about living off-grid because it's coming soon. Be safe. We love you. Ding, ding, ding.